Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 of the Breath of the Wild cell shading tutorial series. In part 1 we went over how fake sunlight works, and now in part 4 we will be going over how actual shadow casting sunlight works. You can see here that the sunlight is accurately casting shadows, making sure that things like Link's arms are casting shadows on his body, you see on the leg here. But you might notice, when I go in and out of the shade, that the real sunlight is actually being masked out by the fake sunlight. You can see here, while I'm half in and out of sunlight, that the line that sunlight comes to an end, right here, is shared with the fake sunlight. So the first thing we're going to do is generate our lighting data for the scene. So let's add a new shader, a diffuse BSDF. Let's add a shader to RGB node, connect the two. We'll add a new math node, set it to multiply clamp it, and then multiply it by 10,000. Now you'll see here we've run into a little bit of an issue. This is all white and doesn't have any shadows at all. And the reason is because our sun isn't the only thing that is making light at this moment. Blender by default has a gray environment map that we need to turn off, so we'll just head to the World Properties tab. See the strength right here? We'll set that to zero. Now you can see we have our crisp shadows here. And now that we've done that, we're going to want to overextend this light a bit so we don't have any clipping issues with this and the fake light later down the line. So let's add a new normal node. And we'll add a vector rotate node. Connect the normal to the vector. We'll switch this to Euler. And we'll take our light direction XYZ node and drag this into the rotation of the vector rotate node. We'll connect this to the diffuse BSDF. And you can see, before and after extends it by a lot. We'll notice a little bit of blurring here. That's just because I have soft shadows on in my render settings. In the render tab here. I'll turn that off, you can see. But it doesn't really make much of a difference here, so we can just leave it be. So now let's get this into a frame. And we will name this Scene Lighting Data. Let's see, what color should we make this? Let's just make this a bright yellow for the sun. Now let's move this over here. Now let's add a new Multiply Add node. And we will connect our light direction vector Z output into that multiply add node. We'll multiply this by 10,000 and we will subtract by 1,000. And we'll take the output of the scene lighting data in our multiply node here. We'll multiply these two by each other. And unclamp that. And now you can see our fake directional light is now masking out our sunlight. So now that our sunlight and shadow setup is done, now we can focus on getting this integrated with the light controller node group that we've made a while ago. So let's add in a new group input node. And we will add in a new mix RGB node. Set it to multiply, set the factor to 1.0. And we'll multiply our sun color by our sun strength. Duplicate the multiply node. And we'll do the same for our indirect lighting color and indirect lighting strength. And we'll select all these and bring them up here. We'll move the group output just to make some room. We'll duplicate the multiply node again. Multiply this by the output of the sketch metal rubber mixer. And we'll do the same for the indirect lighting color. And we'll duplicate the multiply node one more time and change it to a mix node. 
And then we will take the output of the indirect lighting color, put it in color one, and take the sunlight color, put it into color two. And we'll take our sunlight shadow setup and put that into the factor of the mix node. Connect that to the output. And so what we've done here is we've basically made a universal controller that will tint the color of the sun and indirect lighting on every material that uses this node group. So let's just get all this stuff into frames. Name this one sunlight. We'll just keep it white. Add a new frame. We'll name this sunlight color tint. And we'll make a new frame named indirect lighting tint. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put this node set up on every other piece of armor in the scene so I can show you all how the tinting will work. Okay, I've set up all the clothing with the node setup we made. Now if we go into the lighting controller node, we can change the color of the sunlight and the indirect light. And we can also change the strength of the lights as well. So we can change the strength of the sunlight and the indirect light. You can see the color change affects all of the materials at the same time. So if we wanted to, we could make a nice sunset with orange, change this to like a 4. And we can make the indirect light a nice purple color, keep that at a 1. Moving on to the next part of the shader, some things in the game actually use transparency, like Link's arrows. And if you take a look at the Albedo's alpha channel, you can see our transparency texture. So let's go back into our node group. And let's add a new mix shader node. We'll set the factor to 1.0. And we will connect the output of everything we've done into the second input on the mix shader. And we'll add a new group input. And we'll take the empty slot here and connect it into the factor on the mix shader. So I just made a new input on the group input. And let's go to the group tab and rename this transparency. And we will move this up so it's right under our rubber input. So hit Control H, scrunch that down. And then we can add a transparency shader node. And connect that into the first shader input on the mix shader node. Then we connect that to the group input. But now you'll see this red line here because shader data is not equivalent to color data. So we'll just want to go to our outputs here, see the color output, switch this to shader. And now you see it's green, so it's good. And now we'll just connect the alpha channel to the transparency input on the shader but you'll still notice there's no transparency happening yet. So what you need to do is go to the material property setting and switch the blend mode to alpha clip. And the same with the shadow mode. And let's just get all of our transparency nodes into a frame. Transparency. We'll make the color just a grayish. And last on the list, as far as clothing shaders go, we have emission. And if you don't know what emission is, it's basically just glowing stuff. That's it. So we have an emission texture here that makes the glowing emblem on the back of the phantom armor. So we need to turn this into a purple glow. So let's go into our clothing shader, 
and let's add a new add shader node and put it between the mix RGB node and our transparency. And we'll add a new emission node and connect that to the add shader. We'll set the strength on the emission node to zero. And we will add in a new group input node. Connect a blank input into the strength and then connect another blank input into the color. Now we'll go into our group tab again. We'll rename strength to emission and this color input to emission color. And we'll just move these up so they're above the transparency in the group input. And then we'll hit control H. Let's also add a new math node. Set it to multiply. And we'll put it in between the emission strength here. We'll multiply by five. Now let's take all of this and put it into a frame. Scooch the transparency over a little bit. We will name this frame emission. We'll make the color a bright blue teal. And now if we go back to our emission texture and we connect the emission texture to the emission input on the shader, you can see it shows up as a glow. And you can change the color. Let's make it pinkish purple like the game. But you see it's not really glowing yet. And that's because depending on your render settings by default, you should turn on bloom here, and now you can see it starts glowing. But yeah, that'll be the end of part four of the tutorial series. And in the next part, we'll be going over skin, hair, and eye shaders. So I'll see you soon.